Hello, now one of the common problems when building Rails applications is uh, making dynamic forms. So displaying or hiding some fields based on values in other fields. And here in this example, I have a node, I can create a node, and a node has visibility and body. And if I select visibility publish or draft, uh, there is just this other body field, but when I select passcode protected, you see I have an additional field. I remove passcode protected and this field is not present. And the validations also work. So uh, for visibility draft, uh, I have only body that is being validated and for passcode protected, the passcode has to also be present. So you see it uh, has some conditional validations on the back end and also it is rendering the passcode field on the front end only if uh, I select that it is passcode protected and you see it is not a full page refresh. And I'm using absolutely minimum JavaScript here. I'm leveraging server side rendering and uh, turbo a lot. So let's see how you can do it in your application. Let's actually start by building a new Rails application. I'll check out the main git checkout main. And here I have a blank uh, Rails uh, application. So let's see Rails as it is an absolutely new Rails app and uh, I will create a new scaffold. Let's name it posts Rails generate scaffold post. A post will have a body text. It will have uh, access. So like we'll make it again draft published passcode protected access and it will have uh, a passcode, a passcode field. OK, let's uh, generate the scaffold. Let's say git at all git commit main uh, scaffold posts and now let's go to posts and open the form posts and let's open post so new post and you see we have this body field access and passcode field and now let's make it so that we can uh, uh, not create a post without any fields filled in so let's add some validations I will go to the post model, post.rb, and add some validations, validates, uh, body, presence, true, and same will be for uh, access, validates access, presence, true. And now when I create a post, I get these validation errors. Looks good. And we have to have a few different options of access. So it's going to be uh let's say we'll create an enum enum access and the options are going to be uh, draft uh, then uh, uh, published and uh, passcode protected like this Okay, and now let's make it so that instead of having a text field for access, we'll have a select. So let's open the post uh, form. And here instead of text area access, text field access, we'll have form.select access. And we will pass in this uh, accesses. So post.accesses. Let's see if it works. Okay, we have these three options and let's make it so that uh, we can also, well, not have anything selected by default. So let's say include blank true. Okay, and now we have body access that can be selected and passcode. And let's also add the validation for passcode, the conditional validation. So validates uh, uh, passcode, presence uh, true, if... Uh, uh, the post is passcode protected. Okay, if the post is passcode uh, protected, and let's see if it works. So uh, I'll try to create a post, body and access can't be blank. I will select access draft, body can't be blank, access passcode protected, and you see passcode cannot be blank. Okay, looks good. So on the backend side, our validations work. And now let's make the passcode field invisible unless the access is passcode protected. So let's go to our form and uh, say if uh, post dot uh, passcode protected, then display the passcode field. I'll refresh and you see now we have just the body field and the access field. So Let's uh, try to validate. I press create post, body can be blank and access. I click 
passcode uh, protected, click create post, the validation fails, but uh, the new field is rendered. And now I can fill in the password and click uh, create post once again, and the validation uh, uh, of passcode passes, and I still need to fill in the body. Okay, so you see, now uh, having uh, all these validations, uh, like clicking create post each time uh, after I fill something in, kind of uh, lets us regenerate the uh, post with the params that we have passed in and uh, render the form uh, with uh, some params. But uh, how can we make it so that we don't uh, actually run uh, the post create command and don't fail validations each time we change some kind of field? Well, let's try adding a separate uh, button in the form that will not be a form submit button, that will not lead to the create action in the controller. So in posts uh, controller, it will not lead to the create action, but it will lead back to the new action but submit uh, the params that we have selected. So like passcode protected or draft or published. So let's go to our form and in the form we will have uh, form.button and let's name the button like validate. And then we'll say form action will be new post path and uh, form method will be get. So when we click this button, we are going to just redirect back to our new post path. It is going to be a get request. And uh, we are going to submit the, well, we are going to redirect to the new post path with the post params that we have in this form at the moment. So uh, let me go back and new post. Let's uh, click uh, one of the accesses, click validate. You see, we did not have uh, a, um, validation errors but we have something submitted in our url and we see that uh, we have selected access that is passcode protected but uh, you see the access has been uh, made blank and uh, actually all these fields are not recreated when we redirect back to this post at the moment so to have these fields saved uh, and kind of recreated when we redirect back to new post uh, we would go to our new post action and add post params here. So we are going to have post, post new with the post params that we submit. Let's uh, try once again. And you see the params stay. But if I go back to posts and you post again, we get this error param is missing or the value is empty because we uh, require these params and they're all uh, absent. So not to have this error, I would go back and have params.fetch post and we'll also have an empty value here. Now going back to post new, you see we don't have this uh, error anymore. And now when I select body, uh, let's say access draft, I click validate. So I have submitted and the fields are still here. I will select passcode protected, click validate and you see the passcode field has appeared. So each time now when I uh, uh, in input something in the field and click validate. Uh, I don't uh, run the validations. I don't run the post uh, uh, create method. Instead, I regenerate the form based on the params that I have submitted. And there can be something conditional, like uh, I can see if the post is passcode protected. So I can even have it as a field like equals post passcode protected and uh, display this. Uh, uh, well, HTML, like uh, this form or this uh, value based on what I submit in this form. Okay, looks quite fine. But uh, you see, I don't want to have this validate button that I press each time. I want this to uh, work automatically. So each time I select access, I want this validate button to be automatically clicked. And better if this validate button is not visible at all. And for this, we are actually going to use a small stimulus controller. So let's create a new stimulus controller. I will say uh, Rails generate stimulus form element. I'll just name the controller that way. And let's open this controller. Okay. Oh my god. So uh, let's open the form element controller. And we're going to have a target. So I will say static targets equals, uh, let's say, submit button. 
submit btm. Okay, and uh, let's hide this button when we connect. So this submit button target dot hidden equals true. Let's see if it works. I will just assign the submit button somewhere, well, on this validate. So I will say data and in data I will pass, uh, uh, so the controller name is form element and the target will be submit button. And I have to wrap this all into this uh, form element uh, target. Well, I'm not going to wrap the whole form. I'm just going to wrap uh, part of the form that I need, uh, where I need the stimulus controller. So I will say div data controller will be form element. I will start here and I will end this div, uh, well, let's say after the passcode input or even uh, here. I don't need the passcode in this form element div, I guess, at the moment. And let's see if it works. So I will refresh. Okay, I'll start the server. Refresh and go back to post, new post, and you see this uh, button isn't visible anymore. So using the stimulus controller, I uh, hit the button. Okay, but we need to kind of submit this button. And I want to submit this button each time something is changed in this form select. So I'm going to use this controller to add uh, a new action. I'll say like uh, remote submit will be the name of the action. And uh, I will find the submit button and click it. So I will say this submit button target click. Okay, and now I should say when to click this submit button target in this view. So inside this form select, I will say, uh, I'll wrap this into braces, and here I will say data, uh, and uh, I'll have an action, and the action will say on change, and the controller's name is form element, and the action would be remote submit. Okay, let's see if this works. So uh, basically what do I have here? I have a hidden button and when something changes here, I want to submit this button. So I go back to this form element controller. I find this remote submit action and remote submit action says that I have to find the submit button and click it. So it finds the submit button and clicks it. Let's see if it works. Okay, I refreshed, I uh, will change the access, and you see it was submitted, I changed access once again, and the passcode field has been uh, displayed. So you see, now I have a full page refresh each time I uh, change access, and uh, the passcode field is been displayed. So already not bad, but I don't want to have a full page refresh. Uh, what if there are some page, parts of the page I don't want to refresh and importantly, I don't want to have this uh, not beautiful stuff visible in my URL. So for this, we are going to use a bit of turbo streams. Oh, turbo frames. So uh, let's wrap this into a turbo frame. I will say uh, uh, the content that we are updating. So uh, I will say equals turbo frame tag uh, passcode field do and statement here so the content that is being updated will be wrapped in the turbo frame and uh, this form will target a turbo frame so turbo frame and it will be passcode field Let's see if it works. So you see now this form, uh, well, this button is targeting not the whole form, not the whole page, but only it should target the turbo frame passcode field. Let's go back to posts and change access. And it's working. So you see the URL is not being updated because uh, I'm targeting just a, a turbo frame. And uh, inside this turbo frame, I update the content. So you see, I can have uh, any content I like. 
And moreover, inside the Turbo Frame, I can have a Turbo Stream. So for example, I want to update some kind of uh, value in a random part of the page. Or, for example, I want to have these uh, fields uh, in a separate uh, uh, view file. Well, let's start from something simple. I will have, so if the post is passcode protected, I can render turbo stream, for example, let's say equals uh, turbo stream dot uh, update. I will have some kind of uh, div, additional div here, for example, let's say div uh, id uh, turbo uh, stream uh, target whatever hello and let's uh, find this uh, div inside our turbo stream and update it with some html like time dot zone dot now for example and uh, each time the post is passcode pr protected we are going to update this div with pass uh, with time zone now let's see if it works so i click published oh yeah i'll just refresh the page now so we have this field hello and uh, each time i select uh, passcode protected hello will be replaced with time now so you see now i'm updating any random part of the form of the page uh, with the turbo stream and you see I select other fields, it's not been updated, but when I click passcode protected, this is been updated. And this way, inside uh, of uh, dynamic content, you can have a turbo stream that would update anything on your page. And that's basically it. So uh, it is just an introduction to these dynamic uh, fields with Turbo, but some things that you should definitely consider is that, uh, first of all, see to it that your validations are intact. So uh, if you have... Uh, fields uh, that should be visible or that should be filled in or not filled in based on uh, other fields, then you should definitely have some kind of conditional validations in your model. Also, uh, in the form, uh, I'm using a turbo frame tag and uh, yeah, the button uh, has a remote target, the turbo uh, frame tag. And I'm using this tiny stimulus controller just to hide the button. You don't have to use this to hide the button. You can just add something like uh, uh, hidden true if you want. But the most important thing for this stimulus controller is that uh, it uh, finds this particular button and clicks it. If you might uh, be having a lot of different uh, dynamic uh, things inside the form, then you can have, uh, again, many times the controller and uh, many times you can have this uh, validate button that would validate a different uh, part of your form. So possibly a different turbo frame. So yeah, basically that's it. I hope it helped you and good luck in your coding adventures.